Today in this 2017 Chevrolet Equinox, we will be having a look at and showing you how to install the Durali Series 8000 Plate Fin Transmission Cooler Kit, part number D13502. Here's what our transmission cooler looks like installed. Now the reason you're going to want an auxiliary transmission cooler such as this one on your vehicle is quite simple. Heat is the enemy of transmissions. It is the number one cause of premature failure on your transmission. By reducing the temperature of the fluid inside your transmission, you will extend the life of it and also have added cooling abilities. The colder the transmission fluid is, the more heat it can actually absorb. Plus, we are expanding the cooling capacity of the system by having additional room for more fluid, which will also help reduce the temperature. Now you may ask, how is this important to me because my vehicle already has a transmission cooler built inside the radiator? Well, it's quite simple. If you're ever planning on doing aggressive driving or towing a trailer, towing a trailer causes additional wear and tear on your transmission and causes increased fluid temperature. By cooling the temperature down further, you are making it easier on your vehicle in order to tow that extra weight. Now how this works being installed in addition to the factory cooler inside the radiator, the fluid will leave the factory transmission cooler from the radiator go inside of our auxiliary cooler here that we installed, get cooled down even further, and then go back into the return line that goes into your transmission. So you're adding additional cooling capacity and a secondary cooler by having this aftermarket cooler installed. Now for a few measurements to better assist you in choosing if this cooler is gonna work for your vehicle. At its widest point, it's 11 inches wide. From the very top to the very bottom, it's seven and a quarter inches tall, and it is seven eighths of an inch thick. Now, one thing our customers have noticed when they're installing this cooler on a vehicle, not necessarily an Equinox, but other vehicles, they have noticed when they're installing it in line with the factory transmission cooler that they have needed additional hose. Now, we do have additional hose available on our website, I found when installing this on this Equinox here that the amount of hose that comes with it was just the perfect amount. We didn't have any left over and we didn't need any extra. Now the 8000 series of Durali transmission coolers are a plate fin design and the plate fin design increased surface area. The more surface area that we have, the more cooling capacity that we have. The more the fluid you can spread out over a larger distance, the more it can get cooled down to reduce the temperature of your transmission. This cooler also features turbulator technology to help agitate the fluid passing through it to help with heat transfer, but also to help prevent any drop in fluid pressure. Our transmission operates off fluid pressure, so if it falls below a certain amount, it may not shift gears properly. By maintaining our fluid pressure, our transmission will shift gears properly and work as it's designed. This cooler has an aluminum construction, so we don't need to worry about it corroding or rusting out over the course of time. It also has a nice gloss black finish, so it'll be easily concealed behind the grill of your vehicle. It won't be visible as you're looking at the front of your car. With our fascia back in place, you can see how our transmission cooler really isn't visible at all. With its gloss black finish, it hides itself nicely in the dark area behind our fascia. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. To begin our install, we need to remove several fasteners over the top of our fascia so we can remove it. On each side, we'll have three plastic fasteners. There's a center section that you can get underneath with a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool. Then you can get underneath the outside section and pop up the entire clip. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. With the clips removed, we can grab this panel, lift up, and fold it back. Now across the front of our fascia, we're going to have four T20 torque screws to remove. Now in our wheel wells, we'll have 
two more T20 torque screws, plus two more plastic fasteners to remove. So at the corner where our fascia meets our fender, if we look straight up, we'll find a seven millimeter screw that we need to remove. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. Keep in mind everything that we do on one side will be repeating on the other. Now we find ourselves underneath our fascia at the corners where our fender liners meet it. We find two more seven millimeter screws to remove. Now we can grab our fender liner and pull it away from our fascia. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll remove our fascia. We'll grab it at the corner where it meets our fender and we'll pull back. If your vehicle is equipped with fog lights, you'll need to disconnect those. In order to do that, you slide this red tab here back towards you and then you'll push in on the tab that was underneath it and pull back. With our fog lights disconnected, we'll set our fascia aside where it won't get damaged. Now we need to remove the shroud around our AC condenser. In order to do that, we'll have two seven millimeter screws, one on each side. Then we can lift it up and set it aside. With our shroud removed, we now have access to the bolts that hold our condenser in place. We'll have a 13 millimeter bolt on each side at the top. Now we're going to unclip this AC line from our fan shroud. We'll pull back on the clip and rotate it to the side like that. Now we'll lift up on our condenser and pull it forward, giving us room behind it. Now this next step is optional. You don't have to do this, but I recommend doing it because it will make your life a little bit easier. This part here, how it angles out, will make it difficult for our hands to get behind the AC condenser to attach our hardware. So we're going to remove this. In order to remove this piece, we first need to remove our headlights. In order to remove our headlights, there's three fasteners. We have one, next to the plastic panel, that's a 10 millimeter. We have a second seven millimeter here, and then a third seven millimeter here. Once we have it released from the top, we need to remove a fourth seven millimeter fastener here on the side. Now we can slide the headlight out and we'll disconnect it by sliding this red tab back, pushing on the black tab and pulling to separate. We'll do the same for the other side. Now running along the back side of the panel, we'll have four 10 millimeter fasteners like this one to remove. Now we can lift up on this panel and set it aside. Now we need to find a spot to mount our transmission cooler. Now the best way to do this will be in this area here, the top driver side of your AC condenser. So right like this will be perfect. Now the way we're going to attach this is with the hardware that comes with the transmission cooler. We'll take our foam isolators here peel off the backing, we'll line it up with the outer holes in our cooler, making sure the hole lines up with the hole here, and we'll just push it on. We'll do this on all four corners. Now we'll take our mounting rods, and we'll poke them through the holes in the mounting pad, just so we have about an inch sticking through. We'll do this on all four sides. 
Now we'll line it up with our condenser and we'll insert the rods through the gaps in our fins, making sure we don't puncture any of our fins. Okay, you can see them start to pull through. We'll just pull it all the way through it this time. We'll take the back side and we'll push this down, the rod, pulling it tight and we'll cut off the excess. And we'll do this for all four rods. Now we need to locate our return cooler line from our existing transmission cooler. And that's this top hose going into our radiator here. The way you can tell with the return line is if you start your engine and hold your foot on the brake pedal and accelerate for about 15 to 20 seconds and then shut the engine off, you can feel the two hoses, the one at the top and the bottom. The one that's the coolest is the return line. There's this black collar right here, which covers our lock. We'll slide this back, and then we'll have access to our fitting right here. With our cover removed, we have access to our clip. Now, we have to get this clip loose in order to pull our transmission line out. So, I'm rotating it right here. It's a fairly small clip. If we get a hook underneath it, if we can pull it up. And we can remove it. Do not lose this clip. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your line to stay into the radiator. Now, we'll grab our line and pull it out of our radiator. With our line out, we can reinstall our clip now. We'll just carefully get it back in place without dropping it. Okay. All right, we have it back in place now. This is a Durali General Motors radiator adapter fitting. It snaps into our radiator. We will be using one of these to go into our radiator to hook our hose onto. So you see, this in here is the exact same as the end on the factory transmission cooler line. You can pick up this fitting on our website as part number D13035. So we'll simply just take this and push it inside a radiator and it'll lock into place. Now we'll take our hose that comes with our transmission cooler and one of our hose clamps, slide this on, and then we'll hook this onto the fitting that we just installed in the radiator. Now, if you have some transmission fluid laying around, if you lubricate the fitting, it will make it easier for the hose to slide on. And we'll tighten up our clamp here using a flathead screwdriver. Okay, it's snug, so we're good there. We went ahead and routed our hose down the side of our radiator underneath the air conditioning line here, and we have it next to the first fitting on our transmission cooler. We'll remove the rubber plug that's over our fitting on our transmission cooler. Now, we'll measure off how much hose we're gonna need to make our connection. Right there will be good. And we'll cut off the excess. Slide a clamp over the hose. We'll lubricate the fitting with some transmission fluid. Now we'll take our hose, and get it on that fitting. Sometimes it's helpful to help spin it as you push it on. Okay. Okay, we have it slid on enough now. Take our hose clamp and we'll tighten it. You can also use a quarter inch socket on these clamps and use a ratchet. We went ahead and repeated the process for our remainder section of hose going to the other side of the transmission cooler. We routed that hose over the same path 
as our other hose. This time we'll go above our AC line though. Slide our hose clamp onto that hose. I'll put a little transmission fluid onto the cooler hose so that our line will slide onto it easier. We have our hose pushed on enough now. You see the ridge right here. We want to clamp after that ridge. Okay. Now at this point, while we still have our fascia off, it's a good idea to start up the engine, check for any leaks at any of our connections, and adjust our fluid level as necessary in the transmission using the appropriate fluid and following the specifications listed in the owner's manual of your vehicle to ensure that you're at the correct level. With our cooler in place, we can go ahead and reinstall everything the opposite that we took it off. Okay, now we'll reinstall our fascia, making sure we plug our fog lights back in. And that completes our look at and showing you how to install the Durali Series 8000 Plate Fin Transmission Cooler Kit part number D13502 on this 2017 Chevrolet Equinox. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.